Hello, hello, this is QMG, the quantum mechanics guy. I have something very special today. I have Merman's GHC machine. This is from Quantum Mysteries Revisited. Uh, it was published by Merman uh, in the 80s. And this is a paper that Feynman had the opportunity to look at. And uh, Feynman was very impressed and he gave very good reviews to this paper. So let's look into it. Disclaimer, Merman's GHZ machine was inspired by the work of Greenberg, Horn, Zellinger, which introduced the mathematical details for Merman's GHZ machine. However, Merman attempts to simplify their analysis in order to focus on physics and presents thought experiments in his paper to attempt to disprove the alleged existence of what I call Merman's GHZ machine. Uh, the, the phrase Merman's GHZ machine is something that I named uh, to refer to Merman's paper. Merman is famous for saying, shut up and calculate. The expression uh, is means to discourage deep quantum interpretations that do not suggest any experimental support that would actually change the quantum theory. And that leads to the next one. Science is about debunking the hypotheses by means of some experiment, not just about confirming a hypothesis. Many sciences focus on verifying hypotheses. Physics tries to disprove a hypothesis and verify as well. They are not mutually exclusive. Let's go to the next one. So here are some relevant references. And one of those references is Bringing Home the Atomic World, Quantum Mysteries for Anybody, also by Merman. And this is the first paper that uh, uh, Merman wrote uh, this is the one that Feynman actually looked at. And he was very impressed because he reduces uh, something complicated to a simple machine. And this is in the American Journal of Physics. And basically, Merman introduces Bell's initial idea that quantum information from an entangled system could come out with definite values and the idea would be testable. Merman introduced a machine that would attempt to simulate the entanglement and show that it would not be possible as suggested by Bell's analysis. The machine would require multiple runs of the experiment and the results would have to be analyzed statistically. So basically, he simplified the analysis of Bell to make it accessible to uh, anybody who is not be familiar with quantum mechanics. So let's take a look at the second uh, important citation. This one is, can quantum me mechanical descriptions of physical reality be considered complete? And this was published by Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen. And this was published in 1935. And here, Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen, EPR, suggested that thought experiment of an entangled system with two quantums that could be separated and could be measured arbitrarily in two different ways. Each way of measuring one of the quantums could result in different outcome for the other quantum instantaneously, no matter how far apart the two quantums were. Einstein referred to this phenomenon as spooky action at a distance. We'll come back to this spooky action at a distance in this paper. So why is Merman's GHC machine important? Well, it demonstrates Einstein's 
spookiness in a simple way. That is, avoiding Einstein's EPR analysis, which is difficult to demonstrate directly with some experiment. The other one is, no need for Bell's statistical analysis, i.e., a single run of an experiment could demonstrate that quantum mechanics is wrong if it failed to give the expected output by unexpected device setting changes, kind of the way originally suggested by the EPR thought experiment. Merman recognized that using the GHC machine suggested in Quantum Mysteries Revisited was a much better than Bell's machine that the Bell machine he introduced in bringing home the quantum world. In other words, this paper is better than the other one because it's more neat. And we'll show that. What does Armin's GHC machine do? Okay, so this is where we actually look at the matter. And here's a depiction of the machine. And here is what it does. The central apparatus delivers three quantums to three separate detectors, A, B, C. Each of the detectors have two, uh, two possible settings. Oh, that should be two right there. Either one or two. The output of each detector is a red flash, R, or a green flash, G, right? So the uh, information comes out of the center central apparatus right here and you can go into apparatus A, apparatus B, apparatus C and as you can see the settings for each device can be set to one or two, one or two. This one is particularly set to settings two, two and one of them is set to one and the outcome could be a red or a green flash for each of the devices. Now what are the rules for the GHC machine? How does this device operate? Let's take a look at it again. Here's one rule. If one detector is set to one and the other at two, then an odd number of reds is detected, right? So you get, if you, kind of like the way it is right now, right? If these two right here, these two settings are a two and the one is at one, then we should expect red, an odd number of uh, reds here. So we can get three red flashes. We can get one device to flash. If all detectors are set to one, then no odd numbers of reds, right? So, so if I turn this one to one, if I turn the other one to one, then suddenly all detectors should give me no odd reds, right? So uh, you can get uh, all greens, for example. You could get um, two reds. And let's take a look at this next one. Here's a summary of possible outcomes. So for detector one, if one detector is set to one, here are the possibilities. You can get uh, four different sets of possibilities. Uh, the letters represent the colors, of course, and you can see right there the three devices. So here's an example of that setting. And then if all detectors are set to one, then you get these possible outcomes. You also get four. And here is an example of that. Okay, so the difference is, notice that this device is set to, um, this one is set to one, this one is set to, uh, all of them were set to one. Sorry, uh, important observation about the outcomes. We can predict what one detector will do by the outcome of the other two detectors given the specific settings. Right? So this device allows you to predict what will happen in the other uh, devices. Here's an example. 
the settings for device A, B, C are set to 1, 2, 1, respectively. Device A and B flash red and green, respectively. What did device C flash? The answer is a green, a G, right? Here's another example. Device A, B, C are set to 1, 1, 1. Device B and C flash green and green, respectively. What will device A flash? And the answer is also green. Okay, simple. Okay, so let's form a hypothesis about the GHC machine. Maybe each of the quantums carry instructions about how to flash each device based on the settings it encounters. If they carry instructions for each set of settings, then let's take a look at it. Number one, given any of the settings 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, on ABC respectively, the devices could flash any of the elements from the set odd described as red, 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 green, 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 red, green or green, green, red, but never elements from the even set. Green, 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 red, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, red. Now, number two, if the instructions they carry would have to, carry would have to be able to change outcomes by a change in settings. In other words, by changing settings from any of the elements of the set different defined as 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, to elements of the same 1, 1, 1, the device should flash elements from set even instead of element or of elements from set odd, right? So in other words, just by changing things suddenly, we should get sudden changes in the results if there are some hidden rules, right? So are there any hidden rules? So let's see, if you think about it, the rules that each of the three quantums would have to carry if the settings of one of the devices set to one and the other two were set to two can be written according to Mervin, like a sets of possible instructions arranged at the source. So this is something Mervin wrote in his paper. He wrote it like this. You have to figure out a little bit what this means. So uh, the top row of each of the eight sets corresponds to setting one. The second row corresponds to settings two. The column of each set corresponds to three devices, A, B, C, respectively. Okay? And if you think about this, here's an example that you can, uh, that, where you can use these rules. Example for devices A, B, C set at 2, 1, 2 respectively, according to the rules stated, the device would flash red, 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 green, 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 red, green, 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 red, green, red, green, 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 red, 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 green, green, which verify what was expected, right? So for that setting, it works. And uh, let's go to the next one. There's a problem when the hidden rules are applied to a different setting. So remember, we should be able to change the settings and the outcome should be different if indeed there are hidden rules. So let's take a look at that. If the two devices set at two are switched right before the two quantums arrive at the devices, then according to the hidden rules, the possible outcomes for all devices would have to be the upper row of the hidden rules. That is, red, 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 green, 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 red, green, 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 red, 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 green, 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 red, green, and green, green, red. Notice that this outcome is not what was predicted by Merman's GHC machine. This means that there are no hidden rules for Merman's GHC machine set at the source. So in other words, the rules for one particular setting work for that particular setting, but if you change the setting, then they don't work.
So you can uh, conclude that there are no hidden rules. Can a quantum system simulate Merman's machine? Yes, Merman's machine can be simulated with a quantum system and it is possible to change the equivalent to the two settings and the outcome would be as expected no matter how far apart the detectors were or the time delay between the measurements. So yes, that is why quantum mechanics is, is spooky because you can actually do this with a, an actual uh, quantum mechanical device, but uh, you cannot simulate this one in a classical way, apparently, as we were trying to do. Inspired by the work of Greenberg, Horn, and Zellinger, GHC. So here's a more formal introduction. GHC introduced the GHC state on the Z basis for three quantums S, and here is the state. Basically, it's, a, it's the difference between the three quantums in the zero state minus the three quantums in the one state, right? And notice I put a proportionality constant, uh, proportionality uh, symbol there, because there's a pro uh, constant that uh, needs to uh, be put in front. When the GHC is measured with operators, uh, sigma y, sigma y, x, sigma y, sigma x, sigma y and sigma x sigma y sigma y the outcome is the same ghc state indicating that the product of the measurements is positive odd number of positives a this is analogous to setting one detector and the other two to two and the outcome is an odd number of reds Hopefully you see the analogy. When the state GHC is measured with operators sigma x, sigma x, sigma x, the outcome is the state minus GHC state, indicating that the product of the measurements is negative. Okay, so can we, what can be concluded from Merman's GHC machine? Well. It is difficult to simulate Merman's GHC machine with a classical system. You may say that there is no classical system that would simulate Merman's machine, but uh, I, I would say, I would put a big question mark on that one, right? It looks like you cannot do that. It presents what Bell referred as non-local with non-locality, non I, should, I should have written that, without Bell's analysis, right? Um, so, number two, number three, I'm sorry, any quantum system that behaves like Merman's GHC machine is appropriate to demonstrate the non-local aspects of quantum mechanics. It is simple enough to explain to a student in secondary school, right? So, notice that you don't need to have a very specialized background in order to understand Merman's GHC machine. Is there a way to create Merman's GHC machine in the IBM quantum computer? Of course, yes. To simulate the 111 settings, the GHC state would have to be set in the X basis and all the measurements would have to be done in the Z basis. Let's take a look at it. So there is a circuit. Uh, as you can see, the first part is the first part is right here is the GHC GHZ state and notice I put how to mark to put it all in the X basis and uh, let's go and to simulate the uh, the A the A a situation where two of them are set to two and one is set to one, use the P gates. So that's what it is shown right here, okay? Notice there are P gates here in all, all of them, right? Let's 
Let's go to the next one. So here are the results from the simulation. I noticed that I made a simulation with five shots each. And of course, the results were as expected. So on the left side, you can see no gates. And on the right, you can see even number of gates. And of course, you can see the results underneath. And you can see we have, an, uh, for one, we have an even number of reds. And for the, on the right, you can see the odd number of, of, of reds or odd number of reds. In this case, the reds would be ones, right? So how do we express the circuit mathematically? So on the left, no P gate in the X basis. You can write, uh, you can write the X basis as plus or minus. So the machine state is equal to the addition of ket plus 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 with ket negative, 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 right? Measurements along the Z direction gives even number of ones or no ones. Now, even number of P gates can be described as the subtraction of the ket plus 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 minus negative, 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 right? Measurements along the Z direction gives odd numbers. Right, as shown. Okay, significance of the simulation. The results show that we we show what we would have obtained with a quantum computer. It is just a simulation, right? So this is not the real outcome from a quantum computer. Notice that all qubits show even number of outcomes when only two P gates were used in two of the three qubits as if they were co uh, coordinating their outcomes together when they were measured. So these, so the simulation of Merman's machine demonstrate the spooky action at a distance that Einstein coined in his 1930s paper. Also notice only five shots were required in the simulation. In theory, only one shot could disprove Merman's machine. In contrast, Bell's demonstration demonstration requires many more shots of the program to demonstrate quantum spookiness. So what is the message? As you may see, it is possible to demonstrate the spooky aspects of quantum mechanics, as Einstein and others try to show, using simple experiments that are realizable even with a quantum computer, up to a certain degree. And the presentation of those experiments can be shown even to those that are not familiar with quantum mechanics. In this way, Merman's GHC machine allows even those at the high school level to learn about quantum mechanics and run their own experiments with a quantum computer. All right, well, I hope you enjoy it, and I will see you next time. And as always, for those about to quantum, we salute you.